All right. Today, I want to talk a little bit about perspective. Um, I was working earlier today on another draft of No More Heroes. I think this is the fourth edition <laughs> of this. And I'm currently in the midst of about 1,780 pages of editing right now. So needless to say, I have a lot on my plate. But as I was working on this chapter today, I was writing a scene where a mother is saying her last farewell to her two children. And she said something that I thought was really interesting. Perspective is a reflection of what we are, but not what makes us who we are. There are many in this world who believe otherwise, and so let their minds create illusions that paint themselves righteous. But perspective is, and forever will be, like clothing, and can be changed just as easily. To know the truth, one must look deeper, to find the intention that shows the perspective in the first place. That is, if we are to ever truly understand who and what we are. So perspective has always been something very interesting to me. And I just want to preface any of my videos that I ever do. I am an observer. I'm a storyteller. It took me a long time, it took me 11 years to realize what exactly it takes to make a great storyteller. My dream is to write one of the greatest stories ever told. So needless to say, I am not competing with any authors of today. If I don't make a dime in my career, it doesn't necessarily mean that I fail. I am competing with Homer, Shakespeare. And so in order to do that, a lot of the work that's coming out today is meant to sell. The number one priority is profit. But how do you make a story that lasts 2,800 years? These storytellers have to tap into and observe what it is that makes human nature. Along the way, it's been a long journey so far, and a good one. I have read a lot of books. And I want to say that I think that understanding perspective has not just helped me greatly as a storyteller, but also helping me to lead a easier, more peaceful life. For example, a perspective, like was written in the, in the paragraph, is like clothing. You put on a hat, it changes your style. You choose a perspective, it changes your belief. Right? So, in my observation, there are no absolutes. Someone who claims that there is an absolute to me has just simply chosen to believe that. But I cannot find any absolutes in nature, except perhaps change, which is ironic, because it's quite a paradox. And I would like to say that in my life, I have been in sorrow, I have been insecure, I have had anxiety. When I was younger, I would say that there were a lot of times where I was cowardly. But you know, I never gave up. Fortunately, I kind of look at this world a little bit like a game. And like a game, the idea is to level up your character. So I kind of take that perspective with myself and have ever been chasing growth. And in order to change, to chase growth and to grow and learn, 
you have to be open to the fact that what you know now may not be correct. And so therefore, any perspective I have at any point in time is always subject to attack by myself. I see that as my sole responsibility to myself in order to keep growing. For why would I want to stay the same? If you look at a child, they change every day. They grow and change and learn. And when you observe people that are older, you tend to find that they've stopped changing. They've stopped growing. Their perspectives have become rooted Let's say you have anxiety, insecurity, depression. No one knows whether it's science, philosophy, mythology, culture, religion. No one knows exactly why it's there. No one can say with irrefutable proof why something is. Anyone who says otherwise is not observing the same world I am. Therefore, if we know that the answer is open, then is the choice not yours to see it in a certain way? And if the choice is yours, why choose to see it in a way that makes life harder for you? Like I said, perspectives are like clothing. Except that I think that we should be a little bit more delicate and careful in the way in which we choose our perspectives. I have been gradually changing, observing, and essentially attacking my own perspectives for years and years now looking for the ones that bring peace into my life. And I'll tell you, I used to have, I used to get anxiety over the, the weirdest things, what people think, what people think, but why? Why choose to have anxiety over that? And yeah, you could say, well, I don't choose. Well, that's right. Because when you ingrain a philosophy, when you keep it for a certain amount of time, it becomes ingrained in you. And in order to get rid of that, you have to kind of dig it out. It takes time, practice, hard work, willpower. If you're taking pills, Adderall, Xanax, trying to cure yourself of, these, of this thing, it's not going to do anything except further your inevitable suffering. It takes self-discipline to grow. You have to really want it. You have to want it as much as going to the ocean and putting your head underwater and sitting there until you desperately want to breathe, until you need to breathe. And then you will change. And if you slowly look at yourself and break down the perspectives in which you have, the perspectives that have no guaranteed There is no 100% proof of anything. There is always a crack in the wall, if you will. Always, with all things. It's quite frustrating and a little scary sometimes. For ultimately, we fear what we do not know. But if we know, that we cannot know. Why choose to be fearful? Why choose to live a life in which you fear that entire life? If your perspective is yours to choose, which it is, and your perspective is not who you are, but a reflection of what you are, who you are is the is the intention within the choice of the perspective. That is who you are. You are not the color of your skin. 
You are not your religion. You are not any of these things. You are that little voice on the inside that only you can hear. That is who you are. And only you know the, the reasons in which you choose the perspectives that you do. No one can tell you otherwise. The reason I'm making this video is because I see in the world a lot of suffering. I have been blessed and lucky. I'll make another video about luck another time. I've spent months pondering luck and what exactly it is. But let's stick on perspective today. I've traveled all around the world. I've ridden a bicycle across Spain, ran with the bulls, backpacked six countries in Europe, went to university in Japan. I've surfed waves in Fiji. I've climbed very tall cliffs. Let me tell you, heights was perhaps one of my greatest fears. I used to get so nervous before going to the climbing gym and leading for years. My hands would get clammy in the car the same way I used to be before I would go and spar my old Muay Thai sensei. But still, I pushed myself to do it. I didn't want to live in that fear. And so I kept looking for new ways of looking at it. Because if you can change the way you see it, you can change the way that you react to it. Perspective is essentially, or the, the power that you have in being able to choose your own perspective is your truest power. It's always been there inside you. Once you understand the power you have in choosing your perspective, in the act of choosing your perspectives, you can bring peace into your life. Now, this has worked really quite well for me over the years, and I feel a lot of times completely at peace. I won't say that it is 100% gone. Anxiety, insecurity, fear, doubt, these things are gone. They're just, I'm not there yet. I don't know even if you can get there. But I do know that I have been able to reduce it by 99%. 99%. The little things that used to bother me, the little things that made me nervous, worrisome, they no longer do. Because of the way in which I choose to see the world. And that has brought peace into my life. And once you bring peace into your life, you are then in a place to share that peace. That peace becomes a positive energy, if you will. And that energy resonates outwards and it affects other people. And that positive reciprocates another positivity. Every single person is responsible for their own self-peace. If you're looking for it in a, in a drug or in some type of thing where you expect it from another person, you're kidding yourself. You're leading yourself down a path that honestly gets harder and harder to walk back out of. Because for every step you take, you have to take that step back out. Like I said, we start to ingrain our perspectives. We start to believe the fallacy that it is who we are, when that's not true. If perspective is like clothing, and you have the power to choose what clothing you wear, then why not take that same power and choose how you see the world? I believe that what the world needs is to understand the many facets of human nature, what it is that makes us the way we are. I'm 
I'm so grateful to be a storyteller, to be able to read books, even though it's quite hard to make a living writing books, especially in this day and age. You really have to be fucking good. But I am not daunted. I will write one of the greatest stories ever told. But along the way, if I can help other people find peace and share that peace, then I will do everything I can in my power to help you and anyone else. If anyone has any questions, welcome to leave a comment. I'm happy to discuss any of these things. Like I said, this is just my observation. If you take this as me saying this is the eternal truth, blah, 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 yada, 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 you're not listening. It's just my observation. So take it or leave it. And for those of you who do, I hope it helps you find a little peace in this quite chaotic world we find ourselves living in.